How you doing, guys? How's it going? Doing good. Can I give you one of these? Sure. Yeah. There you go. Whoop. Oh, you got it. There you go. Awesome. Let me give you one of those. Yeah. Coming okay. here for the conference? Yeah. Excellent. Came from San Antonio. So we got That's a bit of a hike. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. It was, it was really smooth. It's going to be left pretty early this morning. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, we're just out here just shining the light. Uh, we're not going to the conference. We're not welcome to the conference. Oh. So that's why we're uh, out front here. Uh, just shining a light, exposing, asking our brothers and sisters exactly what does their Christianity look like in a culture that's murdering over 3,000 of God's image bearers every day. Right. You know? So why aren't you welcome to the conference? Oh, they consider AHA a cult. Sure. Abolish human abortion. Really? Yeah. Can you believe it? And, and that's why we give stuff like this. This here is, you're from San Antonio, you're San Antonio too? This is uh, actually what we got the Republican Party last year to put on their plank. And this was what we handed out when we stood out at the Shepherds Conference out at uh, John MacArthur's church back in February. And we asked people to just take a look at it, if, you know, any disagreements, we'd love to hear it. You know, uh, we're not above correction. So what exactly do you teach that? They're against specific. Well, the exactly what we're doing here. <laughs> what is that? Standing out in front of a church. So, well, why would you stand out in front of a church? Well, where would you go to speak to the Christians? You see, that's so why I ask. Christians. What's that? So your your target audience or is the Christians themselves? What? Well, what? Yeah. Why would we target heathens, secularists, to understand? what God's word says about child sacrifice in this country. But aren't they the ones who primarily need to hear that? Oh, they do hear it. When we stand out at the clinics, okay, when we stand out at the schools, when we stand out at the uh, town squares where we'll be tomorrow night, they hear that. But we also come to the Christian because, think, I mean, think about it. Well, yeah, and, and think about it. Over 3,000 of God's image bearers are murdered every day in the womb. Right. Right? Yeah. Where is the church? Yeah. It is true that people like Jeff Durbin, who would support people at this conference, go out and talk at clinics, and they do a yeah. lot of good work for that too. So. Yeah. You know, we got nothing. You know, we're not we're not against Jeff Durbin. Jeff Durbin is doing awesome work, yeah. and we're doing the same type things. You know, we're going to the Christian, and you know, where did Isaiah go? Where did Amos go? Where did Jeremiah go? That's true. But they were also unrepentant. Who was unrepentant? Israel and Judah. Well, that's true. So, yeah, but we stand out in front of a church. Well, well, think about it. And that's why I asked you, what exactly does your Christianity look like in a culture right. that murders over 3,000 babies every day? So let me ask you, do you believe that most people in the church support abortion then? No, no. So then why would you make your ministry? There's a big on? difference, and this isn't a ministry this is what God command when he said that we have to love our neighbor yeah, as ourselves. Just like a better term, so. Okay. Um, but think about it. Um, where do you go to wake up the church? You go to where the Christians are, right? Right. I mean, when you, we had, I don't even know, know if you know, do you know what HB 948 is or was? No. Okay. Uh, that's because never, most Christians didn't want anything to do with it. HB 948 was the abolish abortion in Texas bill that came up in the red, uh, legislature this past spring that would have totally made abortion illegal okay. and would have told the feds, we are defying you. You want to come after us? Fine. We are not listening. We won't even show up to court. The state of Texas defies you because murder is murder. Right. Okay. You know, we had like less than a thousand Christians show up to support that bill and the legislator that put it forth. So you basically, you're wanting to just call Christians to do their duty, essentially. <laughs> it's not really that hard, is it? Right, but at the same time, don't you think that kind of presupposes that these individuals do or don't support what you're, what you're Well, doing? you know, a lot of people say they're pro-life, right? Right. Okay. And a good moral opinion is a good moral opinion, but a good moral opinion not backed up with with action 
is just that. It's a good moral opinion. Lots right. of people. I bet you everybody in here will say they're pro-life. But what does that look like? And that's why I ask people, what, what is your, and I say, what is your Christianity look like in a culture where over 3,000 babies are murdered every day? Now, like say that building right there, it's a, it's a garage, but say that was an apartment building, or those apartments right there, if they were burning to the ground, mm -hmm. And there were kids on the top floor right. screaming, help me, help me. Would our response be what it is now? No. I, that's right. right. I mean, th that's if, see, the problem is the majority of Christians today, uh, you know, and I hate to say it, it hurts, are ageists. They say they believe in God's word. They say they believe that all babies are created in the image of God, okay? That all babies are a blessing from God. And then they turn around and ignore them being led to the slaughter. Yeah, and I, and I, I want to disagree with that. I, I agree that most American Christians aren't Christians at all, ought to be honest. All right, and where do you go to wake up the Christian? Right, you would go to the church. But don't you think that this, in particular, this manner, I can see how people would find this off-putting. Oh, of course they find it off-putting. No, I mean in terms of... He made a video calling us a cult. Of course they'll find it off-putting. But then again, if you were in adultery... Well, I mean, the church wants to be... I mean, Jesus told us to dispute matters within the church, not make it public so that people see the vision outside the church. Aren't you the church? Yeah, I am the church. I'm the church. But I'm, you're hand in the way, you're kind of putting it on display that the church is divided, essentially. Which is No, that's not what we're putting on display at all. We're putting on display that the church is apathetic. Well, they've, oh, okay. I can see that, too. And the church is apathetic. Don't you think you should be going internally to do that instead of making it public to where people will see you? Internally situation? doesn't want to hear it. Well, you got to keep fighting for it. Well, we are. That's why we're standing out here. Right, but don't you think this is in some shape disrespectful and presu like presupposing that these individuals don't support what you support? All right, yeah, all right. Well, so let's go down that route, okay? If I was in adultery, right. okay, and say I attended this church, okay. okay, and I was in adultery, in willful adultery, and the church wasn't going to do anything. What does Matthew 18 say we're supposed to do? When you go to the, say you go to the pastor and say, uh, this guy is in adultery. Right. Supposed to bring it to the church. The church, the body, not the church, this building. Right. Okay. I uh, you know, big C, not little C. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what we're doing. We've gone. You know how many times we've stood out in front of Emilio's and talked to Emilio? You know, we've, we've spoken to Emilio many, many times. I don't really know much about him. Okay. Well, that's Emilio. He's putting on the, the conference. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen it before. Okay. So my but, question is, from what they've told you, why do they believe that you're a cult then? If you're like being 100% honest, what? Because because, because of what we're doing. We're we're just what you said. We're being divisive. We're not. They they consider what we do for church not church. Okay. We have our own church. I think the reason why, though, is because this makes everyone here who's not a Christian sees Christians against Christians, which is divisive. Well, and we were told explicitly not to do that. We were told to handle it within, and that you weren't even supposed to go to the courts or the judges about anything that had to do with the church. You went to the church. So from the outside, what they see is division. Right. And as someone who used to be an atheist, and if I saw this as an atheist back, you know, whenever I still was an atheist, I would say these guys don't know. They say that to us all the time. You know, you're making us look bad. I'm not, I'm not so much saying you're making us look bad. I think that both sides can fix this if there's cooperation. I agree. But I don't think that you should press it more if you've been outside this church several times. I think you should find a more peaceful way to resolve it. That's all I'm saying. What peaceful way would you? Anything that doesn't make these people think that we're divided as a church. Well, we're not divided as a church. We're here to call. Right. Well, of course they're calling. Of course they. If I was calling you out in adultery right. and you didn't want to hear it, what would you do? Well, okay. you know, he's lying to me. He's, you know. Right. I understand that. You know, when you have no answers, that's what you see, fall back to. From and my this, perspective, not having an objective observation of what's occurred in the past here, I can't make any judgments on that. So I can't. Really and we're not doing this. This isn't even Emilio's church. He's just renting the building. Right, he's not okay. Emilio's church. Yeah. Um, but actually, we've stood at this church also. Um, we, stand at, we stand at every church. Right. I mean, look at it. Say, just for, I mean, I don't know how many people. Say, say 500 people go here. Okay? Mm -hmm. What does, just 500 people attending this church, 
what does that look like? Are we supposed to uh, go with the weightier matters? Seek justice now? What basically is more important than the, the wanton slaughter of over 3,000 of God's image bearers every day? And where is the church? If the church actually rose up, okay, if the church would have rose up just this past spring when HB 948 was coming through, abortion would be illegal here in Texas right now. I can understand that. I, I know what you're saying. Right. I, I hear you. I, I still think that in some sense, I can see why they would find this all putting in the sense of causing divisiveness. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah. Because yeah. unity is first. Half of Paul's letters are about unity. This right, is but is it a false unity? How would that be a false unity? A false yeah. unity yeah. is... The pastor, have the pastor speak on the message. Right, but a false unity is me allowing you to stay in sin. It's like saying peace, peace, when how can there be peace if you're... That presupposes that they're staying in sin. We know they're staying in sin. How? Again, what does your Christianity look like? If that was, if that building was burning down and there were children on the top floor screaming, help me, help me. I understand what you're... Would your response be, I'd like to, but, you know, they're putting on an evangelism conference this weekend. Right? Right? But, or, or whatever. You could replace that with whatever. But you're presupposing that all these individuals aren't doing something about it. And I think that's what's all putting. Because all these individuals could be out doing what you're doing. I mean, honestly. And from the outside, you see this. These Christians are disagreeing with others. Christians don't have the truth. They don't know what to talk about. They can't even agree on this one little thing. That's what I would have, that's what I would have concluded as an atheist. Well, if, if you as an atheist would actually ask, then you would, you know, you could presuppose anything, right? I mean, a, a Satanist could drive by and say, oh, look, this must be a Satan church. Of course, but is this, I don't know. I agree with what you do, but not the means by which you're doing it. Right. You, you would rather us sit inside, talk to the pastor. I'd rather and, both sides be able to handle it in a way that Paul would want to. Right, and unfortunately, they don't want to talk. Right, but that doesn't mean that you keep going after the same people. So what, you just say, oh, since you don't want to repent of your adultery, good luck to you? No, I didn't say that at Is all. Is that what Matthew 18 says? The pastor is held accountable for his local congregation. That's what we see with Corinthians. That's what held accountable to who? What do you mean? Held accountable to who? To God. To God, that's true. So same what you're goes. saying is if, if he's in sin then we should just let that continue and he'll answer to God later? Of course not. We still call them out whenever they're false teachers, whenever they're brothers in Christ, like I know such as James White and Todd Creel, we're all brothers in Christ. You're outside of their conference right now. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Todd Friel and James White are incrementalists. I don't know that word. Um, what it means is like like uh, the, the, I think the House of Representatives just passed a 20 week bill and now it's going to the Senate. That's an incremental bill. That's saying that you don't have to, you, you can't kill 1% of the babies, but the other 98, well, it's 1.3%, but the other 98.7%. Right, so they believe in taking it in steps, essentially, is what you're saying. But you're, steps. And the way you said it is kind of deceiving. Honestly. Well, that's incrementalism. That's what incrementalism okay. is. It is seeking an iniquitous decree and supporting an iniquitous decree. Correct? Right, right. Are we supposed to support iniquitous decrees? Now, um, now we're not saying that if that bill passes, well, that's, that's not a good thing. The point of what I was saying was, are they brothers in Christ? Oh, of course they are. Well, I consider them. Then would you cause a brother strife in the manner that you're doing, if they're calling you cultists, by continuing what you're doing? Isn't that not causing people to stumble in some way by causing disunity in that sense? No, actually, that's... They're in sin. They should repent. If they're still doing it, they'll see that's, again, though, you're presupposing that they're not doing something. Yeah. We, are, we already have that. We, like I said, we've been doing this. I've been doing it. You know how long I've been doing this? I've been doing this for four years, practically every day. That's fine. Okay? So it's not like this is like, hey, let's just show up here because we have no idea what's going on. But you know that the time that you spent here today, you mm -hmm. could have been outside of a clinic 
saving those lives right now? Aren't you being an incrementalist in some sense right now by taking steps instead of doing it immediately? So was uh, the Apostle Paul an incrementalist, or uh, that's that's kind of like? No, he went straight to the Gentiles. He preached to them in the you know the Temple of Bartimaeus. Right. He preached directly to them. So why are you here instead of a clinic? And John the Baptist. Right. And Jesus. Which is my question. And so, Isaiah and Jeremiah. I'm not disagreeing with that. Okay. I'm saying the time that you spent here, you could be doing exactly what you're charging these people not do. Right. So why aren't you doing that? Because I'm here doing this now. But and then tomorrow I'll be doing abortion, this. If that building over there is an abortion clinic and they're burning right now, why aren't you over there instead of over here? Because I'm actually here trying to wake up the church and but calling them to repent of their apathy and exhorting. Right now at that clinic instead of being here talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you saving the babies? Because have you ever been you to a see clinic? How that's kind of hypocritical? Have you ever been to a clinic? I have. Okay. Um, so you know that oh, if I go there, 10 babies will be saved. You know that's kind of out there, right? I've seen plenty of testimonial videos. I've seen, I've seen them. Where? Yeah. Are you going to save here or there, right? Of course. Is that not worth it? Of course it's worth it. Exactly. So why are you. But that's here, what we do of, there. You're talking about the burning building, but you're not at the burning building. Because yourself. unfortunately, I'm only just one person. I can only do so much. All right. Jeremiah was one person. Right. Was and one he person. did so much, and I can only do so much. I can't be here and there at the same time. Right. So wouldn't it be more important to save those babies' lives that you're talking about who are burning in that building instead of talking to Christians? About that? Well, that's kind of, of taking the incremental approach. Right. So you're an incremental in some sense. No, I'm right. talking about what you're doing is taking the incremental yeah, you're going approach. You're to the source. Actually, no. Saying, we're going to where an example. we're you're going to where the showing. problem is, because if the, the church would actually rise up. It would be done. Again, how many babies' lives could have been saved in the duration of time that you've been here? Well, that's Instead, that's up to God. That's that has nothing to do with what I do. Now, I understand what I'm you're trying saying, to say. Your, your position seems kind of lopsided whenever you use analogies that counter what you're doing right here. Well, you know, we go to different I don't places. Mean it, it sound disrespectful at all? I, no, I, I understand it. My name is Matt, by the way. I'm Nick. 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 Nice to meet you. Josh, nice to meet you too. Um, I, I'm not saying you're being disrespectful at all. In fact, I appreciate the dialogue. That's what God's word says, that we should come and reason together. A lot of people get upset. So, you know. Well, that's how people are. Well, that is how people are. <laughs> okay. And if you've stood out in front of clinics, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have seen. Yeah. Okay. But see, that isn't what we're doing today. That isn't what we're doing right now. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, I can only do so much okay I mean that's the truth I can only do so much and if I focus because we're not a clinic ministry all right that's not what we do we're not calling for people to go to the clinics we're calling people to repent of their apathy okay. towards child sacrifice and then God will direct what but, you should do and what I would say to that is that whenever we came up here and started asking about what you're doing it didn't come off as that was what you're doing it came off as you want these people to go to clinics and do something about it. oh no I, I would never say that because well, not necessarily clinics, but you want people to do about it. you don't want them to be well, we want people to do something of course right. that's what so we're here my and perspective is that you could be doing that yourself I am doing it but you're doing that at church not a clinic actually when I'm doing it about right. the way your matters is save a life now or go talk to some Christians about saving lives yeah well so then you know what you're saying is that we should just focus on the clinic if setting an example i mean there's been plenty of people inspired by jeff durbin they go out with him in groups because they see what he's doing they admire it right but like i said we are not conviction. we are not clinic focused right and i'm okay? saying perhaps you should be because what you're saying all right. clinics are the final lines all right that's why we go to the schools because you know how many we have stopped I think just are the front lines. no they're the final lines that's where the person is about to die that's the where front the lines. Is. That's the trenches. Man. The front lines is where you get them before they even get to that clinic. You you said you've stood at clinics, right? You know that the people that go there are pretty much hardened. They've already had their friends, their families, their uh, in some cases their pastors, all give them the okay. Okay. They've gone. They've gone. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. You've been to the clinics. You've seen the people. Those are the final ones. That's the death line. Those people are hardened. They're already set to kill. Okay. Right. But there's been people who changed their mind in that situation, and the life is so I, safe. I know that. I've, I, I have been in, involved in that, like I said, for four years. I know. Okay. I know exactly what you're saying. Right. But 
I'm only one person. And like I said, we are not dealing with a cl- we're not we're not talking about a clinic ministry. We're not you saying you know you need to order. repent. Right. You want to go to the source and fix it that way. Actually, it doesn't even have to be the government. Okay, if they're just the church. Okay, last year in so Houston, the like homosexual the mayor passed a law saying that all the pastors have to submit their sermons. Right, I heard about that. Okay, so what happened? All the pastors rose up. Same thing they did with the bathroom bill. All the pastors rose up. But now we had a bill to make abortion illegal in this state. Right. And everybody was asleep. Everybody was silent. I can see, I can see where you're coming from. I can see where and you're I understand from. that, you know, I mean, this is, you know, I don't want to say confrontational, but it, it seems that way at times. You know, I mean, have I been confrontational with you? No, have no. I been mean to you? No, no. Huh, well, you know? I will say, as I've said, that if I was still an atheist and I saw this, mm-hmm. I would walk away from the cross because of what I've seen. You weren't at the cross to begin with. I know. As an atheist. Right, but many examples have been shown where I saw divisiveness over little things like this, where I saw the church pitted against the church, and I realized those people didn't have the truth. They so then you're putting more faith in no, uh, an that, image than that, in the gospel. I knew that the Bible promoted unity in the gospel. As an atheist, I knew this. And all I knew is that none of these people were united. Yeah, but to, well, as an atheist, okay. Yeah. But you know your your belief of right. of as an atheist was not clear. Obvious. Okay. But See, false unity is not unity. But we do you know. We unite on the opposition of abortion. No, we don't. That's See, what that's, we're saying. And that's what I've been trying to. That's what we're ask saying. You and you just haven't answered. We that. don't. We're supposing that these people don't agree on that. No. What I said, yes, they're they're against abortion. Right. You're against abortion. Right, but you don't He's know, against abortion. You don't know how they're acting against it. All you're doing is assuming that they're not, and then you come out here. But we, like I said, we've been here, okay? Now, right. and I don't know the history. Now, see, right? a lot of people will say, well, we're supporting a crisis pregnancy center. Okay. I don't know that is awesome. Well, it's a, it's a pregnancy center. It's one of those places where if we're out on the, the sidewalks, we'll refer them to them because they can get a free ultrasound. Okay. And they can get counsel. Gotcha. But see, that also isn't good. I mean, it's good that you're supporting this. Right. But if that's what you're doing, that's not being obedient to God. This isn't, see, this isn't a, a calling to love your neighbor. And I, I posted about this earlier today. This isn't a special calling. It's actually a commandment from Jesus. What are the two greatest commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And in this is summed up all the law and the, and the prophets. Right, but if you're causing strife in the church, is that loving your neighbor? Is allowing them to sleep and stay in sin but loving my neighbor? But you're presupposing that they're sleeping in sin. Again. That's the problem. We're exhorting our brothers and sisters to love and good work and to repent of their apathy. Right. Okay. I understand it's, what you're saying. Right, I understand. I don't, I don't yeah. We'll, right, but you're, you're concerned with how... Well, you know, they're all coming here. But how this guy driving by is going to see it. I, I understand that. Yes, no, what you not said. necessarily. There's been several instances in this conversation where, like I said, you're talking about this burning building. You would go do something about that burning building, but you're at this conference instead. But here, right. you're not at that burning building. And I'm at the burning building you're tomorrow. And then, and then tomorrow night, I'm out of town square. And then the next day, I'm out of church. And then at the, and that, that night, I'm at church. Today? We just got here. But what time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Because the door is open at 6.30. Okay, so you've been here for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. How many times, how many lives could that might have been? Actually, according to statistics, two every minute. Does God work on statistics? God is sovereign. No, that's that's the statistic. Two babies die every minute of right. every hour of every day. And what if you could have prevented one of them? That's true. But you were here. But I was here doing what Christ called me to do. If Christ called you to stand for injustice, you would go address the injustice. Correct. I am? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I don't know. That's oh, what I'm doing. Go. All right. Hey, it's it was great talking to you. Yeah, interesting. Take care. God bless you.